Hello, and welcome back to Diary of a Mad Cal. This is Hooch Cal speaking, and we're returning to our mission from Kerbal Space Program, which we were doing in the previous video, where we try to get Jebediah Kerman out of a circular orbit around Kerbin, or Kerth, or whatever you wish to call the planet, and send him into an orbit around the Mun. So we got our rocket, same one as before, still in orbit. Jeb seems pretty happy. So, let's take a look around, enjoy the surroundings a bit, and we need to think about how we're going to do this. Now, the best way I have found in getting a rocket to the moon is to drift in your orbit until you see the moon, or moon, as it's called in the game, rise over the horizon of the planet. And at which point you would want to turn your rocket prograde and burn in that direction. So let's take a moment and drift around the planet. There's our sun, a little farther, and the moon should be coming up soon. Come on, moon, there it is. Okay, so now you know what you're looking for. But I think we might have got that a little too high, so let's go around again. I'm going to slow it down now since we've passed the sun, because we know the moon's going to be the next object to come up. Should have paid a little more attention to the land, but uh, then again, you know, we're not moving at the same speed as the planet. It's rotating, so oh, there we go, and that's a little better. So let's go ahead and uh, turn our rocket prograde. And as you can see, it's a little bit difficult to move without an RCS thruster block. So we're going to go ahead, get her in there. Those fins, oddly enough, for some reason, do help in space. I don't think uh, anyone has been able to figure it out. I'm not sure why they work, and technically they shouldn't, as there's no atmosphere where we are. All right, we're going to burn and switch to the map view. <coughs> All right, now you can see our apoapsis is extending, and oh, it stopped. Oh, we've run out of fuel, so let's drop this. It's just a bunch of weight we don't need, and we'll just use our last stage. Okay, let's get going. Now you see that's going a lot faster, because that's a lot less weight we have to push through space. Okay, we're going to get close, and we're going to edge it in. Okay, so we've got a transfer set up here. We're going to encounter the MUN. So let's go a little bit forward, bring it in a bit, and drift on out. Okay, a little bit of latency here. Don't worry about it. There we go. Just gonna drift along until we get caught in the moon's orbit. Now what's gonna happen here is it's gonna send us in a slingshot trajectory, which will either put us right back in orbit around Kerbin, which apparently is the case, or, worst case scenario, it'll send us around the sun, which has happened before to me. So we're gonna slow down at the periapsis. As you can see, our apoapsis doesn't exist, as it, the orbit will, as it's such a wide arc in speed that it'll send us out of Munner orbit. So we're gonna burn retrograde. Now what burning retrograde is going to do, if uh, you understood anything from the previous video, is it's going to reel in our apoapsis. And you can see it's circularizing, and there we go. Now we've got an elliptical orbit, and it's got a bit of a tilt to it. So the next thing I'm going to show you is about normal and anti-normal. Now, I always tend to get these backwards when I'm doing my burns, but what the idea of anti-normal and normal burns are is that you align the orbital planes. You're basically shifting your plane. Now what this is, is a good way to think of it is look at your hand, hold it horizontal to your eye, and I'll tilt it down. And that would be the plane at which your hand is resting. So think of the orbital path like a plane. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at Kerbin and line its orbit up, and we're going to figure out where the orbits intersect. And right about here is where the Munner orbit intersects with Kerbin's orbit. We're using that as a point of reference, and we're going to turn to the normal direction. Now, like I said, I always get these backwards, and the normal direction when I burn is not quite what I wanted. And normal and anti-normal also rest somewhere halfway between your prograde and retrograde direction, and there is no marker on the navball for them, which is unfortunate, as a lot of us would love to see that added in a future update. But since it's not something you use all the time, I can kind of understand why it's not there, although it would be nice to have as a feature that maybe we could turn on and off. Now, you see the normal burn actually sent our orbital plane in the wrong direction, so we want to adjust it from the anti-normal. 
I always screw that up first time I do it. So just do a little burn, make sure you got it right. Okay, we got it right. Let's just go ahead and try to level that out a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Got the engines killed. Oh yeah, that's about as perfect as we're going to get by eyeballing it. So let's just go ahead and warp around. Now, you're in orbit around the moon. You could circularize if you want, and you could even work with this to land by bringing in your orbit to where it intersects the moon. I recommend when you do this, you do it to intersect the light side. However, we don't have proper uh, equipment on this rocket to land. We're missing a very crucial component, which is landing gear, and a decent ladder for climbing off, so we're just going to go back home. Alright, so we've burned our uh, direction prograde, and we've intercepted Kerbin's orbit. So we're going to just ride this out. Time warp a little quicker here. And look at that. We are home. As you can see, there's the Mon, there's Kerbin. We are now orbiting the planet Kerbin. How sweet is that? So, you're almost a Kerbal hero. Let's go ahead and get ourselves home so that we don't run out of food, water, oxygen, and waste receptacles. So, we don't want to end up dying in orbit. Though that's not really a problem, as life support has not been added to the game yet. And, in a way, I kind of dread when it is. <laughs> that much realism might be a little bit too much for this game. Okay, so we're going to just burn retrograde at our apoapsis. Not quite on it, but close enough. And bring our periapsis in. Now, at this point, I've decided that I don't want to just bring it in to intersect the planet. I want to try to land as close to the Kerbal Space Center as possible. So we're just going to get into about 200-ish, and then we're going to ride around to the periapsis. Alright, here we are. And let's go ahead and get ourselves oriented. Oh, we're a little late. We've passed it up. Do we want to burn here? I mean, it's not the most efficient but, I mean, it'll still work. Um, also, our plane's a little bit off, so let's fix it. There we go. Not quite perfect, but, eh, it'll do. Still a little high. Let's see if we can refine that a bit more. Just go to our next node where they intersect. And see if we can bring this in a bit. Oh, wrong way again. Yep, definitely the wrong way. Why I did that twice, I don't know. Temporary moment of space madness, perhaps. So let's just go to the anti-normal and bring it down. Hmm, looks good. Not quite perfect, but it'll get the job done. So let's go ahead and still a little bit of a tilt to it, if you can see, but, well, it's fine. It wasn't a necessary maneuver, I just wanted to do it. Oh, passed it up. Oh, oh no, the moon's going to encounter us again or we're going to encounter it more correctly. We don't want that happening, so it's now or never. So let's go ahead and burn in the retrograde direction. Okay, so we've got ourselves out of a moon or intercept course, and we're just going to bring in our apoapsis. Try not to uh, sing a waiting song. As I said, I tortured your ears enough last time I sang a song about doing something in this game, even though it was only about one verse. Anyway, rambling. I'll shut up now until we get to something important to talk about. Okay, looks like we're getting it in about right here. A uh, little bit more 
going to try to get this semicircular. We're still going to be left with an elliptical orbit, but that's not important where we don't need to circularize. Just want to get it kind of even so that it's easy to work with. Now that continent right there that looks kind of like Africa is where KSP, KSC is located. So we're just going to t go around and what we're going to want to do is, since the planet's rotating eastward, and we're also traveling in an eastward direction, we're going to want to bring our trajectory in to where it puts us just off the coast. Now, I've never really done this before, but I do know how to do it. So let's see how I do. Okay, let's go ahead and... Wait a minute, I think we're facing in the wrong... Yep, that... Again, I think I'm suffering from space madness. We have been in space for four days, and quite frankly, I get bored easy. And I forgot to bring something to do with me. So, now that we've got ourselves oriented correctly, let's go ahead and bring that in. Now, as you can see, we're just about in and we should begin to intersect the planet right about now. Okay, so we're coming in. Now we want to be very s gentle on this. And let's kill the engines about right here. Nope, that's a bit too far. Too late to fix it now. I mean, I guess we could burn prograde and fix it. We still got enough speed, but you know, we'll deal with it. It's close enough. It's pretty close. It mounts an easy rescue mission to pick up the pod once it lands. So we're gonna go ahead and drift down. Now at this stage, a lot of people would like to just go ahead and drop the remaining stage, but we still got some fuel left, so let's see if we can do some good with it. Now what we're going to do is the other two nav markers, which I can't remember what the circular one does, but the other one points towards KSC. So, let's go ahead and face that. And get a little lower, and we're just going to burn all our fuel in that direction and see if we can orient our rocket a little closer. I'm going to go ahead and let you know now. doesn't work out very well. But, we brought that fuel along. Might as well not waste it. Waste not one not, right? Normally, I would use this extra fuel to further slow myself down to ensure that when it comes time to deploy my parachute, I'm not going so fast that it gets ripped off of the capsule, sending me to a fiery death, creating a small crater in the surface of Kerbin. Again, an activity Jebediah thoroughly enjoys. Now, there goes our engine, and we are now completely unpowered, free-falling, and losing speed due to atmospheric drag. So we're just going to go ahead and turn off the AS say yes, and uh, let our ship just orient itself towards retrograde, which it should do naturally. And we'll just wait it out until we get ready to drop our parachute. Now at this point, all that's left to do is just ride it down until we're about a thousand to five thousand meters above the surface. Pardon that little noise there, I accidentally flicked my microphone with my finger while making hand gestures and talking. <laughs> really need to get a better microphone. So let's just go ahead and drop ourselves and we will wait on rescue. You can go ahead and stop the video here as the mission does end safely or you can continue to watch and see how everything plays out in the end. This has been Hoochcow. Have a nice day. Yeah.